Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can use a letter to represent the unknown in a problem. So it might sound a little bit tricky, but friends, all we're going to do is replace that question mark when we're not sure of part of the problem with a letter. That's it. So our learning goal for today says, I can multiply and divide using related facts and use a letter to represent the unknown. So here's our application problem. It says 24 people line up to use the canoes at the park. Three people are assigned to each one. How many canoes are used? So I want you guys to pause the video and I want you guys to solve this problem. If you want to use a tape diagram, you're welcome to use that. Use any strategy you like to be able to solve for how many canoes are used. So go ahead and pause and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to click pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So I chose to use a tape diagram. So I can see that there's three people are assigned to each canoe. So I drew one canoe first. The total has 24 people and I'm trying to solve for how many canoes are used. So I know that I need to be counting by groups of three to be able to solve how many groups of three there are that equal 24. So I would go three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So now I don't need any more groups. So they people use eight groups because, or eight canoes, because I have eight groups on my tape diagram. Oop, there I go canoeing away. <laughs> okay, so what does the question mark represent in this problem? Yeah, it's the unknown, which is also the number of canoes. So it's the information that I don't know. That's what unknown means. Okay. So as I look at this, how can using a letter to express the unknown value change the way we model and solve a problem? Well, yeah, so I can, instead of using a question mark, I can use the letter C, right? Because I'm trying to find out how many canoes. So C makes sense to me. I can take that out of my multiplication problem. There's no question mark anymore. I can represent or replace it with a C for canoes. Also, I can take my tape diagram and I know that there's those groups and I can model with a C for those are the, the canoes inside my tape diagram. Okay, so let's look at another problem. Oh, sorry, let's look at the same problem. We can set this up with three groups or one group with three, 24 total people, C represents canoes, C times three equals 24. So now I'm going through and solving the same way, counting by threes until I get to 24. So C now equals eight. And then there's eight canoes. So the people use eight canoes. As you're solving today, I want you to focus on remembering to use a letter for your unknown that matches the problem. So to, to me, this made sense to use a C because we're talking about how many canoes there were used. Also, I want you to focus on writing the value of C in your answers. So notice how I wrote C equals eight. So that means if anybody were to walk up to this problem, they would say, oh, C equals eight. So I'm gonna take eight and plug it in anytime I see a C. So it would switch to this C right here would end up being eight times three equals 24. Okay, so you're labeling that unknown by the time you solve it. All right, so here's another problem. 21 students are grouped in threes to go on a field trip. How many groups of students are there? So what does the unknown represent in this problem? Yeah, it's the number of groups because that's what the question is asking us. It says how many groups of students are there? So what letter can we use to represent the unknown and model our on our model and equation. We could use N for like the number of students, but that might get a little tricky because it tells us we have 21 students. So I'm thinking maybe G for the number of groups. What do you guys think makes more sense? N for number of students or G for number of groups? Ah, G for number of groups. I tend to agree with that because that matches what the question is asking us of how many groups of students are there. Okay, so let's model the problem and write an equation to solve. Use the letter G to express the unknown. So 
here's my problem. 21 divided by 3 equals g. Remember, g equals the number of groups. So that's what we're trying to solve for in this problem. So I could draw a tape diagram. I know that the total is 21 students, and I'm trying to find out how many groups there are. So I'm going to have to count by threes because that's how many are in each group until I get to what number, friends? Yeah, 21. Okay, so three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. So as I go through, I can count my number of groups and G equals seven because there's seven groups. So 21 divided by three, I can replace that G now with a seven. So there are seven groups of students. All right, so we're gonna solve for the unknown, which happens to be R in this problem. So 24 equals four times R. So I want you guys to try and solve that problem. Remember, four is going to represent, because it's the first factor, how many groups there are. And then you have to find how many are in each group. So you're it. Go ahead and pause the video. Solve for four times R equals 24. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So the way I solved this was I drew a tape diagram and I said that the total was 24 and I knew that there are four groups and I, I'm going to use, or, and then one group equals, sorry, represents R. So I'm going to do the fair share way to divide up 24 among those four groups. So I would count one, two, three, four, and then keep going in order with the groups. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So as I go through and I look at this, I say, oh my gosh, look at R. Now I've counted all the way to 24 in my four groups. R equals six. Okay, awesome job with that one. All right, for this time, we're gonna solve for the unknown, which in this problem is D. D divided by six equals three. So I want you guys to pause the video, go ahead and try and solve that and click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. All right, so I chose to draw the tape diagram again. I know that the total is unknown right now, that's D. But I do know that there's six in each group and there's three groups. So that tells me if I count six groups of three, or three groups of six, I'm going to have 18. So D equals 18. All right, so sweet, great job friends, using a letter to represent the unknown. So make sure you guys head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye friends.